for YouTube. And I suppose we get started. <laughs> There we go. All right. So, Twitch is kind of odd to operate. So, I'm going to close out of my Twitch. All right. And go to desktop. We're going to go to here. And anyway, tonight I figured it says it's Friday. Let's take it easy. And it's kind of like a little happy hour during these weird times. But uh, I figure we'll do something kind of Suji photo, Suji photo moto. So a lot of boxes and some depreciation of them and take it from there. So if we do some grasshopper now, I'm gonna turn to my perspective. Let's make a rectangle. All right, I think I'm in meters. So what I'm gonna do is just put in 15 meters per. Oop, not there to here, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna make that a little bit wider than what we actually think. Okay, and the next one, we're gonna just move up slightly. Tonight's stream might be a little bit shorter, but it's been a good week, so short is fine. So we'll just bring that up about three meters. That's pretty cool. So most of these images I actually do are literally just to make landscape formatting on Instagram to maintain consistency. So I've gotten a few little messages about that. It's literally just consistency nothing clever nothing cool that's for sure so i'm going to rotate that rectangle and also a little bit of a thing if there's chat i'm probably not going to answer until i'm finished so then we can go back over stuff if it's needed so and then uh, the A for rotate always is in radians, so we got to always change that to degrees. It's a better understanding for me, so I don't get confused. Okay, we're going to take that back over. Ooh, I'm missing the button every time. I'm working on a small laptop tonight, guys. There we go. So I'm just going to rotate that a little teeny bit. And then what I'm going to do is actually take that and move. Just copy and paste it down slightly and on how they line up and then I'm going to bring it up even a little bit more and then I might actually just copy and paste this down so we have a taper on it without actually doing the taper tool there we go so I'm going to bring this back up all right hide a bunch of stuff so I see what I'm working with. Perfect. Okay, so let's make it a little bit wider. Mm, made it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, and then I want these to all be centered. So you can kind of see like off to the right side, which could be Pretty provocative image, but I'm actually thinking let's keep it really censored tonight. So what I'm gonna do is just eh, maybe not. Let's make it really right sided. It's fine. Then we'll just add to like how right sided it is so it overtakes like the bottom half. Then from here, just make a loft. Boom. Uh, we got to start from the bottom, so we're going to start with our original rectangle. Start with the middle, so we get our center. And then from here, we'll get this nice little loft. All we're going to do is cap it. 
And then the next little plugin I'm going to use is called Crystalline, which I don't even know if I'm actually pronouncing it right, but it's fine. And Aaron Plessinger, I believe his last name is, uh, he created it with one of his buddies. So we can go over here. Actually, we can just type in voxel. Voxelize. Give it some geometry. Let's see where it takes us. So we're working in meters right now. So we got to see what the default is. But it's empty, which is great. And so working in meters, let's just type in 10 so we don't crash our computers. I'm just going to plug in the X, Y, and Z. Perfect. So I hope everyone's having a great night, by the way. On the Friday night, kind of lame during these times, but we'll get through this. Okay, so we can start to see the voxelization happening. I'm going to bring it really low, not zero low, but pretty low. If that doesn't crash, if it does, I guess we got to redo it. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay. I might bring it up just a little teeny bit in hopes that it's a little bit faster. And then I'm going to bring that original rectangle a little bit smaller so we get some taper happening a little teeny bit just on the general form. I'll bring that a little bit lower. Because this side looks great, so let's add a little something to it. Okay, perfect. And then just general knowledge, obviously, Rhino works pretty well with meshes. And based on pace, let's definitely make them into meshes. Okay, and then from here, I'm just going to type in volume because I want to take away a few. So we get kind of a dynamic image happening here. Perfect. And then from here, what I'm going to do is take that original rectangle. I'm going to type in a planar or a boundary. Boundary surfaces. And what I'm going to do from here is actually take away from it. And then I'm going to do the same for the top. What we moved previously. Okay. And then I'm going to populate geometry here. Just like so. I'm going to give it a number of five for now. We might want to increase that later. Perfect. Okay. And then we're going to change that geometry to the borders. Basically, what I'm going to do is set myself up to take away some of those boxes we just created. Okay, so we only have five right now. What we need to do is actually flip the matrix. That makes it go vertical, so they connect from bottom to top. And then I'm going to type interpolate a curve. That does, obviously doesn't work because we don't have other ones actually connected to. There we go. I don't know why that one's so crazy, but we'll figure it out as we go. I'm not going to increase the number two. Okay. So anyway, we're going to take that in both those interpolate groups, and we can look at them just like so. Pretty easy. And then I'm going to divide them. I'm going to give it. Uh, let's keep with fifteen. Just like so. And I'm pretty anal about keeping everything in line. Otherwise, this organization kills me. And then we're going to type in closest point. Points, excuse me. So that's where we're going to go. P to P. So that's what we're searching from. And then the, our clouds are from our volumes, right? So anything from here. And then we can list a number. So this is going to be the visual part. Perfect. Okay. 
And now we need to tick away those boxes and then we'll move on to everything else. So I believe it's call index. I think we have to flatten the index since it's one list. Sorry guys, I'm working on one screen and my mouse pad's getting in the way. Perfect. Okay, so if we hide the divides, you can see how these are starting to get in, taken away more and more. It's like so. I think we actually might want to flatten here or add more subdivisions so it actually gets deteriorated a little teeny bit more. Looks pretty standard as it is. Okay, so I'm starting to see some stuff taken away. There we go. So maybe we don't need to flatten that part. There was something towards the center. So let's increase our population. And then maybe we double this. So this one's here. This one's here. Let's do our bottom count a little teeny bit more. I think 40. And then we need to flatten or let's see what this turns out like. Nope, graph doesn't work. Let's try flatten. There we go. Some leg room down here. Okay, so let's increase it. Looking cool. Very nice. All right, so from here, I'm going to go to uh, Weaver Bird. Let's take these mesh boxes that we already created anyway and not do cat mall. Let's do a frame. Let's see where that takes us. Perfect. Looking pretty cool. And the sweet part is that we can we can put a seed on this. Like let's put five on both seeds. And we can parametrically literally just change everything. So if we don't like the look, not with the boundary, but if we don't like the look, we literally just change it. Pretty sweet. All right. And then let's thicken it a little bit so we get some, not that far. Let's get some uh, definition on these little forms. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna make them a little thin. Perfect, just enough to actually get away. I'm liking the way that looks. And then what I'm going to do is actually not forget the Weaver Bird frame. Let's actually just move it up a little teeny bit. And this will come into handy for rendering. So I want to add some like vegetation to it really quickly. So I'm going to just copy and paste this number scroller. Again, I'll answer comments after I'm finished. And then we'll be on the same page. Otherwise, I lose... Who's my focus? Perfect. Okay. Liking it. Okay. So from here, we only have two little items actually bake out. One is actually for vegetation and one is actually for the frame. So all I need to do is just make sure they're on the same uh, geometry. So I'm going to join them, and these are meshes. So obviously joining them means they're all connected. Perfect. Okay, and then I can hide everything basically. Really simple, really, really simple definition to make neat stuff. Very similar to the Sue Fujimoto. I wonder if we actually do a random reduce. Just to kind of make it less what it is, let's try that real quick. So let's do 15 for now. I'm stuck on 15 tonight, even though it's the 24th. Okay, let's do that. Take this away. Let's bring up that number maybe a little bit more. 
Ah, let's bring it higher, double clicking. Perfect. Let's bring it a little bit lower than what it is. So that's 500 reducted. Yeah, we'll work with it for now. I'm going to bring that over, holding my Alt key. Okay, bring that 500 in. Bring that over a little teeny bit more. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to bake these two. Really liking where it's going. Bring my grasshopper back over. So we already know we have thickness and we're in wireframe mode because we only work from grasshopper. I'm going to change my materials on there. Put the standard frame grass so we can add some vegetation. So that's looking pretty sweet. I'm liking it. And then let's go to shaded. And then what I'm going to do to add uh, some artificial landscape, put a bounding box around it. The fingers aren't pinging. There we go. And then from here, I'm going to explode it out. So we have a ground plane. Just like so. And then if I was looking at chat, I'd be like, well, should we do desert or should we do uh grassy but i think tonight we're just going to do grassy so let's make it watery grassy so what i did was just rebuild that plane stretch it out and then what i'm doing is turning the points on so we can make some kind of a lower indent for water to actually happen and then if i go over to my select tab over here Basically, from here, there's select by brushing. I'm going to make my brush kind of small because I actually want to see where the water is coming in for the rendering. Maybe not that small. And then basically, that's my main view. So I'm just going to make some waterways. Just like so. Make them a little wider, maybe. Perfect. We can add landscape in and loom in. Perfect. Really liking it. And then they had add some uh, water. I'm just going to select a plane for the surface. That's a little bit too high. Here, let's bring it right up to the water's edge. That'll be our water. I'm just going to change the material really quickly. Then I might change the actual landscape to sand. So I have two different materials. And then from here, I'm actually going to change... And I'm going to split where the water hits because most of the time, guys, vegetation doesn't grow underwater unless you're doing some sort of uh, hydroponics. So, so now that was sand. Now I'm going to change it just to rock and my material. Perfect. I got to do that for the rest. Oops. There we go. I have to say, one thing I do not like about Rhino 7 work in progress is like you can't just pick selection. It's always in first. So, and obviously this is not Rhino 7, but when it does come out, I hope they change that. Perfect. And then from the sand down, all I'm doing, I'm going to lower it so we have a little bit of an edge just for rendering purposes and so I'm being picky. Perfect. So now all I have to do is export it. Change the Collada file. This is a pretty simple model, so it should render really quickly. Perfect. Then we go to Lumion. Pick our scene. I'm going to do white. Import our model. Resubmit. Perfect. Looking good. Bring it up so the white's not in the way. Perfect. All right. So now we have a pretty crazy looking model. Let's do some material changes. I'm going to change this still into some sort of grass. 
Hopefully we're in scale. Might be slightly out of scale. So I hope I don't crash Lumion. I might change my Rhino model really quickly. So let's type in a scale. Let's just try to make this, I don't know, 50 feet. Yeah, it's pretty big. So let's see what we're going with, working with. Might crash Lumion, but no big deal. So let's just re-export. Maybe we crashed Lumion. And then we bring it back up. To crash it. So we'll just allow it to crash. Perfect. Rhino model's already saved. Hold for review of text messages. We'll just discard it because it's crazy heavy, apparently. Perfect. Now we'll take it from here. Gotta change the name. Perfect. Very custom, obviously. We'll just wait for that to import or re import. Sorry. Got to resubmit. There we go. Okay. And I'll lift it up just to make sure we're on the same plane. Okay. We're going to go to materials. From here, we can start to change everything. So let's see how the 3D grass is doing. This should be a lot faster. Then we can add people. Perfect. I don't know if you guys can actually hear the music, but it's a band called Russian Circles. My one of my favorite favorite bands. It's just uh, instrumental, but at the same time, it's just beautiful. Can be a little heavy metal at times, but it's worth it. It's great working music. Okay, so this is where we're going to take the view anyway. So let's get some water in there, and then we can go to sand. Okay, so nature soil. I think the second page has some nice sand in there. Perfect sand. Okay. And now what we need to do is change our hard layer, which would be the actual frames that are thickened. And I might go to concrete. Get something semi-white. And change the coloration a little teeny bit. And I know my coloration is completely black, so we're going to change it a little bit white. Perfect. Okay, and then the tricky part is that grass layer. So we make it as clear as possible, just clear. And then we double click on our interior glass. Ooh, glass doesn't have, let's see here. Actually, you can make it probably whatever we want. Double click on it. And so whatever it is, okay, I just made it some sort of panel. I'm going to go over to this little foliage tab. We're going to increase the spread. Leaf size, we're going to bring up a little tidbit. And then from here, we need to bring up our ground plane. Get some of that greenery kind of sprouting through this structure. So if I hold shift, basically it goes slower. I just want it partial growth. And then we can change the pattern of it really quickly. That looks pretty cool. So I'm going to put my leaf size a little bit smaller. Just like so. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, spreads there. It's wanting to be a little bit thicker, but not crazy thick. That's pretty thick. So we're going to bring it down just a little teeny bit. I'll hit OK. 
Ow. What we can do is add some plants. Uh, some cattails near the water. So it's not the clearest water ever. Still cattails and frogs. Perfect. All right. And the best thing about Lumia is they have clusters of trees out in the background. So we can leave this pretty, pretty empty for the most part. I'm going to change it back over to single plant placement. But we can just click all the way through. Get a nice image out of this. Trying to cover, because otherwise it just seems like an empty thing. A lot of people don't necessarily think they're making a scene. So anyway, now I'm going to zoom back in. Oop, not that far. Perfect. All right, and then from here, we can click on Select, hit Photo, and I guess we can start rendering. Should we start? Eh, let's add in a person just for scale. Uh, let's go to email. Oh, chat, what is she doing? He's just walking. <laughs> and then we don't need multiple of the same. So I'll add her here. Rotator holding R. Perfect. And then we go back to our render view on how we're going to do this. I'm liking it. So we do custom, realistic. I'm going to do uh, the camera, two point. Uh, let's try out real skies for now. Seems like it's kind of appropriate. Seems like a swampy land. I don't see our leaves growing through, so we got to double check on Lumion. We got to try again, maybe. Give it a second. There we go. I think Lumion might have errored out, so we're going to change that a little teeny bit. Add to it, and then let's make some green, hopefully. There we go. What's that looking like? I think I want to shrink that chick just a little teeny bit. Leaf size is perfect. And then let's look at our objects. Then I'm going to scale her down just a little bit so it seems a little bit taller as a structure. All right, perfect. All right. That looks like a sweet one. Let's lift up a little bit. I think my camera is kind of crazy right now. So that's a good angle. Oh, they're both good. All right. Very horizontal shot. And from here, let's select what the lighting's going to look like. Maybe real skies might not be the greatest thing in the world, but we'll give it a go. Want some light. Okay. Let's try morning, maybe. I want that dramatic cloud looking thing. Oh. 
There we go. That looks pretty cool. Let's try rendering for that. Okay. I know it says book, and I will be doing a release of a design template book with Grasshopper and Rhino soon. And I think you will be able to buy it off Rhino. And I'll have all the Grasshopper definitions you ever want in your life. And uh, that's about it. That kind of looks really bad. I think we go with sun. So we'll delete this out. Sun. Bring this lower. Point two. Make sure we get some dramatic effects. And we need some clouds, obviously. The real sky is just where it's at. Nope, not that. It's master clouds. There we go. Let's bring some clouds into here. Maybe the focal point actually needs to be like that. Or I save that to you. Really liking that. Template book will be 50 little teeny projects, almost primarily grasshopper driven, and hopefully take less than an hour and so long. I think the sun needs to be lower. Point two. Need to change the heading a little teeny bit. I'm not sure about the plants. So it's killing me. It looks so fake. Not quite there either. Well, don't worry, this isn't going in the book. Let's make it sunny. Taking some shadows on there. I'm liking that. And this might be the winner. Liking that. Good sweet. Now if we do like a far away view, might even be better. I don't know how many of you are using Enscape or Lumion, but my god, the finger. Uh, just remembering where your finger goes is just annoying. <laughs> That's looking pretty cool. Really primitive structure. I wonder if we take away the landscape. Catfish tails. Let's take them away. See what happens. Don't be too many. Probably be a better rendering. Put our select key. And the water is fine. I think Lumion 10 does this a heck of a lot better. Water's fine where they live. Here. Yeah. 
and back into the water. That's a better image. Even with the cattails in perspective. Perfect. I think that's the ender. Money shot. Let's see what that looks like. I like it. Pretty simple. I wonder if we change the leaves a little teeny bit. Make them red. Yeah. I'm going to save this view really quick. So picky on materials. A good thing and a bad thing. So it was, I don't know, if it doesn't look right, it doesn't look right. Type. Let's make them red. There we go. Perfect. We render that. Really like how that. This is a pretty quick exercise with one plugin to actually make any, or two plugins to actually make anything good. And you get really cool results really fast. So if we just take a look. Really nice image. My God, is this going crazy? Really nice image, good quality. And it's literally just pixelation of architecture. So really excited about this. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. And it's been 38 minutes and we've made something cool. So I hope everyone's staying safe and uh, hopefully we keep these going. Have a great night.